I'm marrying the boss's daughter, so you're no longer needed over the phone, my husband Carl said triumphantly. I could almost see Carl's malicious smirk. I finally caught my big break. Staying with you, I'd forever be just an employee. But now, as the future boss, I'm going to strive for more, he laughed. It sounded like he was blaming me for his lack of success. Carl had this weak spot in his heart. He always blamed others for his problems. I used to forgive this about him back when I still loved Carl, but now it's different. My patience has run out. I can't forgive Carl anymore. I need to take action. My name is Marley. I'm about to turn 40. I married Carl when I was 25, and we both worked. I left my job when our first son, Juan, was born. But after having our second son, Robert, I started part-time at the local supermarket. Surviving on just Carl's income was a bit tough. Our sons are enthusiastic about their studies and sports, and I'm excited about their future. But Carl, he's indifferent, even to them. Strictly speaking, he's always been distant from the family. He barely speaks to me, just the bare minimum greetings, and we haven't really talked in years. There's a parent-teacher day at Robert's school. I had reminded Carl we should both go see it. I know we had planned to take paid time off together for this event, but on the evening before, Carl changed his tune. One parent at these things is enough. I'll pass, he said. What are you talking about now? Robert was looking forward to both of us coming, I protested. My accusing look met with Carl's unfazed demeanor. I'm busy. Don't compare me to a part-timer, he retorted. Who are you calling a part-timer, huh? I replied jokingly, but deep down I was hurt, almost 40 now. For 15 years of our marriage, we've mostly both been working. That's what led to our growing apart and eventually the rift between Carl and me. That's why I invited him to Robert's event, to reconnect with Carl through our son. But Carl just dismissed it. If you don't want to be treated like an old lady, then make more effort with your appearance, Carl said dismissively. I'm fine being an old lady, I retorted, trying to mask my hurt. I was alone, letting out a sigh after Carl left. Looking in the mirror, I saw a middle-aged woman with a still-defined waistline. In addition to my part-time job, I had been caring for my mother-in-law, Claire, until last year. Her dementia worsened, leading to many sleepless nights due to her wandering. Claire sleeps during the day, so she's not much trouble, but at night she walks around all night long. It's better than being bedridden, Mom used to say. Carl, despite it being his mother, would just go back to sleep, unconcerned. I bore the brunt of it alone. As I aged, balancing work and caregiving became too hard, and we had to put Claire in a nursing home, which weighed on my heart. Please visit sometimes, Claire had said, looking anxious. I tried to visit her with the boys whenever possible, but Carl never once visited her. I attended Robert's school event alone. Carl came home later than usual, reeking of alcohol, apparently having been out drinking with colleagues. Juan, our eldest, seemed to be hiding something. Robert, following his brother's lead, began acting distant towards me. They were both at that difficult age. I tried not to interfere too much, but couldn't help worrying. I decided to confront them. Come on, tell me the truth. What are you two hiding? I asked. Well, actually, Juan and Robert exchanged looks before finally admitting, your birthday is coming up, right? So we both chipped in to buy a cake. What? I was surprised. I glanced at the calendar. Indeed, my birthday was in three days. Honestly, I wasn't thrilled about turning 40, but I smiled, touched by my son's thoughtfulness. On my birthday, they brought the cake as promised. We even tried to decorate the room, Juan said proudly. Though clumsily done, the room was adorned with origami decorations. I felt a surge of happiness until Carl came home. What is all this? He stormed in, furious. I'm tired. I want peace at home. What's with these silly decorations? But today is mom's birthday, Juan interjected. A grown woman celebrating her birthday. How convenient, Carl sneered, and tore down the decorations near the wall, throwing them in the trash. Oh, clean this up and bring me a beer. Hey, what do you think of the effort these kids put in? I raised my voice, appalled by his behavior. How could he be so cruel? not moved by our sons quietly starting to clean up. So what? Carl replied callously. 
Well, yes, I'm 40 and an adult. I don't need to fuss over our birthday. But I was happy about our son's gesture. Wouldn't you be happy if they celebrated your birthday? Just the thought of it makes me sick. Carl made an exaggerated grimace. He complained about how slow we were cleaning up and then continued. I don't want you guys taking up my time. Just leave me alone. I was dismayed, hanging my head low, the boys looking like they were about to cry, continued cleaning up the decorations. Then Carl noticed the cake on the table. I'll take this as a reward for my hard day, he declared. No Juan and Robert's eyes widened in shock before our stundies. Carl grabbed the cake with his bare hands and shoved it into his mouth. Robert started to cry. Juan patted his back, his eyes also brimming with tears. What are you doing? You should be on a diet. Don't eat this kind of stuff, Carl scoffed. In this manner, my birthday and the boys' efforts were ruined by Carl, despite often claiming to be busy with work. Carl's income was never impressive. In fact, he showed no signs of career advancement and was rumored among his colleagues to be incompetent. His frustration spilled out when he drank. At times like this, Tiara would actually listen to me, holding a beer can, Carl said. I was taken aback. Tiara, who was that? As I listened carefully, it seemed that Carl was getting close to a woman named Tiara. She was a junior at his company and apparently had taken a liking to Carl. He was going on about how wonderful Tiara was, carried away by his drunken state. Unlike you, she's beautiful, straightforward, and cute. How far has your relationship with her gone? If only I could marry Tiara, I'd leave this house in a heartbeat, Carl said, contorting his face in disdain. I was speechless. Even though he was drunk, I couldn't believe he was openly expressing his desire to cheat. It seemed he vaguely remembered praising Tiara while intoxicated. I'm leaving. Have a good time with Tiara, I retorted. Carl glared at me silently and left for work. The next day, Carl seemed uncomfortable. If she were just a junior at the company, he would have referred to her by her last name, not Tiara. Calling her by her first name indicated something more intimate. Yet I couldn't bring myself to consider divorce. What would the boys think? I recalled the recent birthday party he ruined. Since then, the boys avoided Carl altogether. He was always indifferent to family, but now they had completely shut him out. Still, Carl was their father. Could I just cut ties with him so easily? I was torn. And then I realized that all my worries were in vain. On my way home from my part-time job, Carl called. His message was clear. I'm marrying the boss's daughter. You're no longer needed. What? I couldn't grasp the situation for a moment. My mind went blank. How sudden and absurd. But Carl continued as if it was an undeniable fact. I finally got my chance. Staying with you, I'd always be just an employee, but now I'll strive to be the next president. Tiara, the boss's daughter. I was shocked again. It was clear that Carl was cheating with Tiara, but I never imagined Tiara to be a woman of such status. To be frank, Carl, with his average income and looks, in approaching middle age, didn't seem to match a president's daughter. Tiara? Yes, you've been obsessed with her lately. Oh, right, Tiara. There was Tiara, too. Carl's response was odd, almost as if he had other affairs. Anyway, let's get divorced. Marley, sure. Goodbye, then. I agreed to the breakup more easily than I thought I would. It wasn't forgiveness for Carl, quite the opposite. I couldn't forgive Carl. The first step was to distance myself from him. I was sure the boys would understand. Carl came home with divorce papers. I signed my name without hesitation. He insisted the boys live with me. I wasn't surprised. When I explained it to the boys, they just said, Figures. Dad never cared about us, did he? Don't despair, I'm here. That's our line, Juan said, comforting me. Mom, don't be sad about divorcing Dad. You have me and Robert. That's right, Mom. Thank you, both of you. I was moved to tears by their words. A month had passed since the divorce. My life hadn't changed much. I sent the boys to school and did housework. Then, on my way home from work, Carl called again. He sounded panicked. Help me, Tiara. Tiara is... What happened? I asked leisurely, eager to get home. Tiara came over, and now my wife knows about the affair. 
that's tough. I nodded in the same leisurely tone. I had suspected this would happen. Suspicious of Carl's actions, I had followed him with Juan. It turned out the mistress Carl wanted to marry wasn't Tiara. Tiara was just a junior at work, a normal girl from a normal family. Today Juan was making beef stew and I couldn't wait to get home. Carl's actual love interest, the supposed president's daughter, was neither young nor beautiful. Why did Tiara find out? I told her. I said it as if it was nothing. What? I told T the truth, with evidence and photos. Carl raised his voice at my words. What have you done? Because of you, my wife is furious. I've been kicked out of the house and I'm fired from the company. You brought this on yourself by deceiving that boss's daughter. Carl spoke as if he were the victim, but he was the center of the problem. I sighed. How long were you deceiving Tiara and your current wife? Shut up. It's none of your business. Well, you're right. We're divorced now, I said with a bitter smile. But you were cheating even while we were married. What did you think of me and the boys? Nothing but nuisances. Marrying you was a mistake. What's wrong with trying to redo? My errors? Carl sounded like a tantrum-throwing child. He was always so childish, never admitting his faults. But whether Carl admits it or not, others won't ignore his wrongdoings. I've lost my job and home, and I don't know where I'll find work next. My wife told her father, the president, and he's pressuring other companies not to hire me. Is that supposed to concern me? I asked Carl, who sounded serious. He was dumbfounded. What do you mean I'm not your wife anymore? We each have to handle our own problems. With that, I hung up the phone. Carl kept calling, but I didn't respond. Instead, Tiara contacted me. Carl came to my place asking to get back together. That's audacious. I was appalled. Tiara probably had the same expression over the phone. Of course, I turned him down, told him to never come back. That's the right decision. I nodded in agreement. Tiara's voice then turned soft. I didn't know about Carl being married. I understand. Everyone had been deceived. We were all victims of Carl, with no reason to dislike each other. I'm sorry. Don't worry about it. I ended the call with a wry smile. Carl's current wife also reached out. She was more emotional, expressing her anger about being deceived and her decision to leave Carl. Hearing her strong voice, I thought, Carl really fooled the wrong person. I received a call that Claire was unwell, so I headed to the facility. The manager looked troubled. Your son just tells us to handle it, not helpful at all. You called me because? Yes, I know you're divorced, but there's no one else to talk to. I see. Though divorced from Carl, I couldn't bring myself to dislike Claire. Before her dementia, she was a strong woman who taught me how to cook. The boys were fond of her too. Claire, I'm coming in. I entered the room to hear her groaning. Claire was in bed struggling to sit up. Don't strain yourself, Marley. Didn't you divorce my son? She said. Claire's voice was filled with anxiety. I nodded and approached Claire's bed. Yes, but Claire, you are the grandmother of my sons. Besides, the facility contacted me about your health condition. It's just a cold, and I'm already getting better, Claire said, then coughed softly. Her cold hadn't healed, according to the manager. Carl was reluctant to pay for the facility, and thus Claire couldn't be taken to the hospital. I'll pay. Let's take you to the hospital. But please get better soon for the sake of playing with the boys again, I said with a smile. Claire looked surprised at my words. All right. After Claire nodded, I left the room to arrange things with the manager. A few days later, I visited Claire again, only to find Carl there too. His reason for visiting, however, was appalling. Mom, I need a little money. Can you lend me some? Why do you only show up when you're in trouble? Don't be mad, please. Carl continued in a flattering voice, unaware of my presence at the door. Mom, you have dad's inheritance, right? Give it to me. Don't talk nonsense. Claire raised her voice sharply. Her anger seemed to overpower her illness, bringing her clarity. The money is for my grandchildren's education and for Marley, who treated me well. But she's a stranger now. 
Even as a stranger, she's kinder than you, Claire said firmly. The inheritance will go to the grandchildren. You won't get a penny. Mom, Carl pleaded, but it was in vain. When Claire noticed me, she smiled warmly. Please take care of my grandchild, Marley. Yes, Claire, I nodded solemnly. Carl tried to argue more but was escorted out of the room by the suspicious manager. I later learned that Claire, anticipating her worsening condition, had already consulted a lawyer through the facility. Carl's frequent visits didn't change her decision. After school, Robert came home almost screaming. Dad came to school suddenly, saying he wants to live with me. Really? Given his previous indifference, it didn't seem like he suddenly missed Robert. Moreover, Robert was set to inherit Claire's estate. Carl must have targeted Robert for that inheritance. Are you okay? Yeah, I ran away. It's weird for Dad to want to live with me. Robert was unaware of his inheritance status, yet he sensed something was off. He might go to Juan's place. That's true. I quickly got ready and decided to pick up Juan. Stay home, Robert. Don't open the door for anyone, got it? I left Robert at home and rushed out on my bike. I found Juan on his way home from school, confronting Carl. The expressions on both their faces were tense. Go away! I don't want anything to do with you anymore, Juan said. Don't say that, please. Huh? Carl reached out to Juan. Juan ran away. Hey, stop. Help, there's a weird man here. It was Juan who called his own father a strange man, but it wasn't surprising considering how Carl had treated him. Juan noticed me clinging to my arm. Mom, get rid of him. Carl, enough is enough. I stepped in between Carl and Juan protectively. Carl clenched his teeth and glared at us. This has nothing to do with you. Let me talk to Juan. Juan is my son. I raised him since birth. Carl never even held baby Juan, while Carl spent weekends out. I was home, overwhelmed with child care. Now he wanted to talk, probably to persuade Juan to renounce his inheritance. Juan, go call for help, okay? Juan nodded and ran off as Carl tried to follow. I warned, if you continue harassing my family, I'll call the police. What? Carl's face turned red. You ruined my future. Your actions led to this. His deception towards three women, including me, led to this. But Carl couldn't understand, unable to admit his faults. Carl remained a tantrum-throwing child, both in career and maturity. Over here, Juan returned with several men. Carl suddenly turned timid, trying to escape. He was surrounded and taken to the police station. Carl was recognized as a stalker, forbidden from approaching or interfering with us. As a precaution, the boys were escorted home by their teachers. I'm sorry my ex-husband is causing trouble. It's Juan and the boys who are having a hard time, the teacher said. Carl still calls, but none of us respond. With support from those around us, we successfully removed Carl from our lives. On a chosen weekend, my sons and I visited Claire. She seemed sleepy, but when Robert approached, she smiled. Good to see you, Robert, and you too, Juan. It's been a while, Grandma. Juan began talking to Claire with a smile. According to the manager, Claire's condition is gradually worsening. Eventually, she might forget us. I hope to build as many memories as possible with my sons before that happens. After spending some time with Claire, it was time to leave. Walking down the facility's corridor, my son seemed restless. Mom, can I talk to you? What is it, Robert? Shy took my hand. Juan grabbed my other hand. Hey, that's not fair, Robert. I want you too. What's going on, you two? I felt a tickle of nostalgia. I remember the days when they were little, walking hand in hand like this. Can we do this once in a while? Sure, we can. We walked out laughing together, reflecting on the journey. It had been a long one, juggling household chores, childcare, and later caregiving, plus working part-time for 15 years. The outcome was bitter. Carl betrayed me and left. Yet, I can still smile because of my sons. I am not alone. I nurtured this bond of laughter and togetherness. I pledged to hold on to this bond forever, smiling at the thought.